What's up, witches? It's Luna and Co. I've got, let's see. There's hey, Pie Wacket. Pie Wacket. That's Pie Wacket, that black void right there. And that gray void right there is Mitchell. Mitchy. Can you even see him? And there's Gilbert. They are here for their treats. They're only an hour and a half early. <laughs> so they're going to have to sit through an unboxing. I have a wonderful deck to unbox for you, and this is this was a first for me. This was a gift from my daughter for Yule, and it's called The Wandering Star Tarot by Kat Pierce, an 80-card deck and guidebook. Now, I have had, I have cried over decks before, but only when I've done a reading that has choked me up. And most often that happened when I was reading for someone else and feeling their you know, their grief and stuff. But this is a first. This deck, I opened it and I'd seen it before. It was on my wish list. And I looked at it and I said, yeah, this, you know, the artwork has this slightly Eastern European, Slovakian feel to it. And I got completely choked up to the point where I could have busted out in sobs. And it's like, I've never had that happen before. So I can't wait to get into it. And in case you didn't know, which you probably didn't, why would you? <laughs> Mercury's direct, technically. Um, but I half of my ancestry is Eastern European and Slovakian. So here we go. The Wandering Star Tarot by Kat Pierce. On the front, it says 80, an 80 card deck and guidebook. So we've got some extras. There is a universe inside you. The Wandering Star Tarot is a compass for seekers and dreamers in search of the treasures that lie within the heart, mind, and spirit. I have to say, this is challenging to read. You can see that it's, a, you know, a darkish uh, gold brown text on black, and it shows up better on camera than it does in front of my face. With unique hand-drawn illustrations, keywords worked subtly into the design of each image. You know, I'm a fan of keywords and a guidebook filled with hopeful messages, quotes, and spreads. This deck invites readers of all levels to work intuitively with the cards for insight and guidance. Journey into this whimsical world of self-discovery and archetypes, and meet two original cards that infuse the major arcana with powerful energy, the Mother Star and the Creator. This was $26.99 in the U.S. and $35.99 in Canada. It's Hay House, and we have... Ooh. We have this um, lovely two-part box. It says, there is a universe inside you, this way and this way. And it looks like we have the constellations for the astrological signs. And then we have the LWB and the deck. Oops, any surprise in there? It just says there is a universe inside you. Take a look at the book. This is copyright 2021, so it's been out for longer than I thought. Um, and the contents, we have an introduction. We have understanding the deck, major and minor. Using the deck, ask, a card a day, three card spread, the wandering star spread, Celtic cross spread, reversed meanings, card messages and meanings, and then the major arcana, the minor arcana, Separated into suits, acknowledgments about the creator. So let's look. Let's read about Cat. Cat Pierce is a singer, songwriter, visual artist, self-proclaimed psychonaut. I love that. And spiritual evolution enthusiast. You better believe I'm I'm deep diving into her right after I'm done shooting this. Known primarily for her music, she is one half. <gasps> Of the sister band, the Pierces, and has also had success as a solo artist. BRB. Okay, I just had to go check because I thought it was. I own a song of theirs. It's called Secret. And it's just amazing. Um, so I invite you to go look up Secret by the Pierces. I shall not try to sing it. <laughs> Uh, her songs have been featured in movies and television shows such as Dexter, Gossip Girl, Riverdale, and more. Most notably, she penned and performed the theme song for the ABC hit show Pretty Little Liars. 
She's toured the world with Coldplay, Lissy, Adam Green, and Albert Hammond Jr. and performed with Emmylou Harris and Elton John. Holy shit! She has garnered two top ten albums in England, one of which reached gold status. Her love of drawing, writing, and delving into the mystical inspired her to create her first tarot deck, the Wandering Star Tarot. Practicing tarot was influential in her own life during times of growth and decision, and she wanted to develop a deck that represented her personal vision and artistic style. Finding some traditional decks to be sometimes ominous and lacking in guidance, she wanted to provide loving insight into each drawing and description that would inspire the user and encourage their own personal evolution. Kat firmly believes that every setback in one's journey offers the opportunity for expansion, and her deck is meant to aid on that path. I am so fucking jazzed right now. When do you read something like that? This is why it's really fruitful to read about the authors and the artists. Okay. Introduction. There's a universe inside you waiting to be illuminated and explored. The Wandering Star Tarot is a compass for seekers and dreamers who search for the treasures that lie within the heart, mind, and spirit. The answers you seek were embedded in your soul fabric long before you took human form. I like that soul fabric. Let the cards gently guide you back to your deepest intuitions and desires that may have become clouded by fear or trauma along the way. I believe that part of life's journey is to reconnect with the powerful light and wisdom that resides within you, and this deck can be a tool to help you remember them. I've used Tarot along my own journey to help center myself and tune in more directly to my heart. The practice of self-reading was incredibly intimate and beneficial for me, especially when I found myself looking for answers. There were times the cards revealed things buried deep in my subconscious and even predicted weighty life challenges on the horizon. Sorry, I have to adjust for my neck. <laughs> I am a singer, songwriter, poet, and visual artist of many mediums. Media. I wanted to create a deck with my, sorry, I can't help it. <laughs> I wanted to create a deck with my own artwork and spirit channeled messages to share this powerful intuitive medicine with others who are drawn to Tarot. I incorporated keywords on each card to serve as a subtle guide when getting to know the deck. And this companion guidebook explores each card's meaning in more detail. The Wandering Star Tarot is a unique and whimsical world where people of all colors and creeds and animals share space with peace, respect, and equality. You're invited into this world with the wish that you bring some of this energy back into your own. This has been a project of mine for many years, and I've learned so much about the sacred practice of Tarot as I develop this deck. I hope that it reminds you that you were once a brilliant star burning in the vast darkness of space. You are made of star stuff, the shattering and scattering of a supernova. Oh, I'm getting choked up, you guys. Stop it. You are a wandering star. What the fuck? Hold up. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. Okay. Let me refresh my coffee. Take a beat. And i just give you a little side story here. Um, I had an experience once uh, trading readings with a medium. And uh, Pat Beers, wonderful, wonderful reader, wonderful person. And she came over and we were swapping readings. I was doing astrology for her. And she tapped into uh, a life where I was in Scotland. And... I, is it Scotland or Ireland? I, I, I know it is Scotland, but, um, where I was leaving on a ship to come to the U S you know, for whatever reason need, I'm sure. And she said it and I just burst into sobs because I remembered. And I've always said throughout my adult life, if I ever went to Scotland, I wouldn't want to come home. And it's like, she said that I just went, bah. This, that's what this is reminding me of. Okay, so you are a wandering star on an adventure in this earthly plane. Now is the time to gather knowledge, love deeply, and soak in all the joy, heartache, pain, and glory that this life has to offer you. Let it shape you into a new creation until you one day return home to your glorious place in the endless sky. 
I wish you much love and strength on your journey. This is tapping into my, um, you know, my neurodivergence, but my experience of never quite feeling like I belong on this planet. Um, hands, show of hands. <laughs> that have had that before. I have my son conjunct Uranus and I never really fully landed on this planet. I've always felt that sense of otherness. And um so yeah, the wandering star. I mean this is this is hitting me in a deep place. Now understanding the deck, we have the major arcana and they describe how the minors are broken down. Now I'm looking for these extra cards. The miners using the deck ask begin with the question find a quiet place and hold the deck close to your heart breathe deeply for a few moments clear your mind of distractions and let the energy of your higher self connect with the energy of the cards and then we have um, a card a day a three card spread past present future mind body spirit physical state emotional state spiritual state subconscious conscious super conscious ooh you your path your potential then the wandering star spread. So we have the heart. And then where's number two? Here's two. The heart of the matter, the shadow, a blind spot preventing momentum. Ooh, that's a great description. I love her writing, by the way. Um, this writing is very clear. Uh, the light, the best course of action to reach a desired outcome. The wound, a core wound that may block intuition. The sway, an external influence that needs evaluating the guide, an unexpected guide for your journey, and the outcome for your highest good. That's an excellent reading. Then we have a Celtic cross and a word about reversed meanings. Well, I'm not opposed to reversed interpretations. I was not led to make them a part of this deck. Each meaning was channeled to support and edify the reader in a specific way. So after placing the cards in your chosen layout, you may simply turn any that are reversed right side up. However, if you'd like to reverse the meanings of cards laid upside down, go inward and see what's revealed to you personally. That's right. And that's a great way to approach reverses that, you know, you know the upright, go inside to see what this reverse is telling you because it can mean um, energies are blocked. It can mean the opposite is happening or required. Um, it can just call attention to this thing that's not part you know, uh, not manifesting in whatever the situation is. So that's cool. And then we have a quote from Lady Frida Harris, who's the artist of the Thoth deck. The tarot could be described as God's picture book. Yes, indeed. And then we go into the meanings. So the fool, we have keywords, we have a paragraph, and then we have a quotation from Socrates and Roald Dahl and Meister Eckhart and Thich Nhat Hanh and Gandhi and Napoleon Hill. This is wonderful. Okay. Then at the end, acknowledgments, and then we just go to the end, Queen of Pentacles, and then we're done. So we do have acknowledgments. Check out the backs. Wow. So the palette is on, on this navy blue. We have um, a lot of color, but they're muted colors, not super bright. We've got this wide open eye in the middle and then rings of color. There's rays coming out. And what really reminded me, kind of a deco-ish border, Art Deco, pardon me, but what really reminded me of the Slovakian, I think, are the dots. Just part of that artwork. And especially, well, when we get to, I think she might be the high priestess, the card that's on the front of the box, you know, we'll look closer. So here's the fool. And we certainly have a recognizable image. We have a young, uh, a young girl stepping off a cliff. Everything's very stylized, really appealing. It's gentle, you know. 
And then around here, we've got this beautiful halo. I don't know what else to call it around her head. And in that halo, it says purity, potential, risk, innocence, desire. So um, I want to go to the meanings. And yes, exactly those keywords is what's in the book. And this border has a little bit of a, um, you know, this dark uh, blue and green checker kind of thing around the, they're just really appealing images. It's reminding me a little of um, Intuitive Night Goddess. Just with the palette. Here's the Magician. Again, a woman, power, action, skill. So it says power, action, skill, power, action. So skill is at the top, and then we've got power and action, repeating. Again, we've got these little dots repeating around, swirly. She has a very distinct style. And we don't see all of the tools. There's an eye floating here. And she has a wand in her hand, but we don't get the table. We don't get the other tools of the um, elements. Yes, this is the high priestess. Look at her. Just look at her. All right, let's see if I can get it to pop in. There she is. Don't know why she made me bust into tears, but she did. Here it says, secrets, dreams, wisdom, inner voice, spirit world. Just beautiful. The Empress. Luxury, beauty, harmony, abundance, grace, fertility, love, nature, beauty, art. So we have beauty on here twice. But just a full array. And we have racial diversity too. Much appreciated. And here's the Emperor, the first male in the deck. And all he says is law and order. So, you know, you can extrapolate... Um, look at that blue and white border again. So, you know, each of them has a distinct border, a distinct background. Each artwork is its completely its own entity, but the art style is very, very consistent. More coffee. All right, law and order. So I was saying you can extrapolate, like law and order. What does that mean? It's structure. It's... um. You know, it's also leadership. What does the emperor do? But he leads and he lays down the law and, you know. So as a beginner deck, I think those are good. It's just the you know, the one kind of inconsistency so far is that we've got cards like the empress that have many keywords and then ones like the emperor is just law and order. Boom, you know. Now I was going to say, I said structure for emperor, but here we have the hierophant. And he says, ritual, ceremony, tradition, structure, knowledge, wisdom, teacher. So he really uh, is structure. And yes, that is a meaning that I ascribe to the Hierophant. Put the keys in front. So they are essentially recognizable, but not in great detail. Here are the lovers. Love, harmony, union. Just beautiful. Like I said, gentle, very gentle work, but colorful. And, you know, there's a lot going on, but it doesn't feel like crowded or busy. Or Here's the chariot. Again, a female journey, success, progress. Look at the little cheetahs. <laughs> and she is holding reins. Interesting. There's an interesting difference. Here's strength. Um, and down here it says courage, strength, control. Ah, the hermit, healing, solitude, inner work. So the only male we've seen so males we've seen so far are the emperor and in the lovers card. Wheel of fortune. Ooh, lucky. Karma, destiny, karma, destiny, karma. And here we see the elements. There's fire, air, earth, and water. Very cool. Justice, balance, equality. They are just so beautiful. The 
old man, waiting, rebirth, sacrifice, reflection. And of course, it is a hanged woman. And then we have death. Transformation, new beginnings, change, endings. Transformation, new beginnings, endings, change. Transformation, begin again, change. So it's slightly different. New beginnings, transformation. Slightly different, but, you know, so it's not like a strict, it has to be this way. She just, she just goes. And I love this image. As you can tell, I got kind of sucked right in. Temperance, guidance, healing, moderation, balance. The devil, desire, obsession, fear, shadow. I like the mask. And the snake, we've got kind of the, you know, Eve trope here. Kind of, you know, the red and the, you know, dark-haired female dressed in red is the symbol of desire and stuff. It's kind of a, kind of a hackneyed sort of trope, but there it is. The tower, destruction, enlightenment, release. No people falling. The star, guiding light, inspiration, faith. Hope, miracles, infinite energy. Wow. I like the faces. The moon says dreams, intuition, shadow. Dreams, intuition, shadow. The sun, light, life, energy. Judgment, acceptance, awakening, assessment. And the world. Reward, success, completion. And we don't, we have an eye and a star and a triangle and a heart, but we don't have like the four elements depicted. And a snack. Oh, and then we, I always forgot about these. The mother star, right? Let's go to the book. Oops. Right, the mother star. And for a keyword, it says yes. Is It says yes in the book, but I don't see it on the card. The path that has led you to where you are today has been full of twists and turns. There may have been times when you doubted yourself and lost faith in your guides. The mother star's appearance means you're coming to a place now where you can look back and see that every setback served a purpose and every failure taught you a much needed lesson. The strength, courage, and character you've gained along the way have made you into a unique and resilient person. It's time to step up and embody your full potential. The mother star holds a cup and a sword. She wears a pentacle around her neck and is flanked by wands. This could be mistaken for the magician if you're not careful. And if it didn't have a totally different title. Uh, her journey and soul exploration connect her in a balanced way to each suit of the minor arcana. And if she appears in a reading where you have a specific yes or no question... She represents a resounding yes. Her guide, the gentle three-eyed winged tiger, is also here to offer you assistance, vision, and a strength as you embark and strength as you embark on this new chapter of transformation. And the quote is from Ernest Hemingway, live the full life of the mind exhilarated by new ideas, intoxicated by the romance of the unusual. I just love the faces. They're absolutely beautiful. And then we have the creator. And this one is no. How interesting. The creator card. And again, we don't have the word no. Oh, yes, we do. Wait, 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 wait. Mother Star says yes right here. And the creator says no. The creator card signifies that there's a powerful energy brewing in the atmosphere around you. It may feel overwhelming and tinged with undertones of darkness. Indeed, you may feel the urge to run and find shelter from this storm, but trust that you are ready to transmute this force into something that will propel you forward on your path. This card is also here to remind you of the power of the word no. No to things that overwhelm or undermine. No to people who drain your life source. No to thoughts that drag you into despair. You are mightier than you think, and a glimmer of faith paired with solid intention can give you the power to harness lightning. Each day you have the choice to be the victim of fear and circumstance or the creator of a new consciousness. Choose wisely. And the quote 
is your no is a sword that cuts away the non-essential so that you can live life so that you can live the fullest life and that's from Bethany Webster now I'm also thinking that the no card could be just to call your attention to where the universe may be saying no to you and in that case what happens when you hit a roadblock if you're the creator you create a new path forward you look at what's to be gained from that no and you find a new path forward so really fascinating additions i don't think i've ever seen another tarot deck that has yes or no in it now the ones career beginnings travel the two says plans partnership influence we'll clip along a little faster now the three oh here we go action adventure luck um one of the things i really like about the keywords is they're not in your face they are entirely ignorable if you choose because they are so well integrated into the image. Four, creativity, union, freedom. The five is competition, debate, and defense. So we have certainly departed from the images that we recognize. This is not at all recognizable as the five of wands which talks about, you know, competition and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it says it in the keyword, but we don't see it in the image. So the keywords are certainly appreciated. Six of Wands, victory, glory, triumph. The owl with the sticks. Seven is challenge and courage. I like that, just those two keywords. It's a challenge, something coming at you, and the courage to stand up against that challenge or stand up to the challenge. Eight of Wands, good news, travel. She's about to shoot a wand. Nine of Wands, ooh, you can see by her face. Strength, support, boundaries. But she definitely looks like she's been through some stuff, and there's a reason she's, you know, barring the way. Here's the 10, Burden, Demands, Overload. And again, you can see it in her face. Page of Wands, Good News, Communication. The Night, Flow, Fire, Intuition. Again, women. It's a women-centered deck. Queen of Wands. What does she say? Creativity, Leader, Focus. And the King is a male. Honor, standards, wisdom, motivation. Ace of Cups. Okay, so we have a person in the Ace of Cups. Love, relationships, beginnings. Two of Cups. Uh, we have one keyword, love. That's all. Oh, no, wait, see? See, they don't hitch in the face. Love, partnership, harmony, peace. Subtle. Well done. Here's the three. Family, friends, joy, abundance. Joy, friends, family. But not celebration. I guess joy with friends is sufficient. Four of cups, yearning, disillusion, boredom. Five is loss, leaving, sorrow. Harmony, childhood, reconciliation is the Six of Cups. I like reconciliation. Seven, choice, instinct, passion, extremes. Wow. The eight, <laughs> look at this. The octopus, change, shift, change. Hmm. The nine, happiness, vitality, optimism, joy. 10 is prosperity, joy, family, contentment. Joy has an exclamation point. Joy! Here's the page of cups. Magic, love, fun. Magic, love, fun. Magic, magic, love, fun. The knight, proposal, quest, prospect, pride. So the knight, so far female, queen of wands, intuition, compassion, creativity. King is charismatic, warm-hearted, intuitive, empathic. Swords, success, change, decisions, action. 
We have the blindfold, <laughs> which I appreciate. Um, decision choice, decision choice, decision choice. All the way around. The three, heartbreak, sorrow, and grief. The four, wait, did I say four? That's three anyway. Rest, recovery, quiet. The five is upheaval, conflict, loss. Went kind of pippish there. The six is explore, discovery, moving on. Yes. Seven, theft, dishonesty. The eight, again, I appreciate the blindfold. Frustration, anxiety, trapped. The nine, anxiety, worry. And the 10, endings, final, closure. Page of Swords, where, oh, there we go. Curiosity, intelligence, charm, ambition. The Knight, highs, lows, conflict, tension. Highs and lows. The Queen of Swords, strength, ambition, truth. And the king, ambition, power, influence. Let me go back here to the. So this knight, I was thinking, was that a male or a female? It's an animal. <laughs> They're kind of that animals kind of come in randomly, and I don't mind. Ace of Pentacles, prosperity, property, beginnings. The two says harmony and balance. The three, and you know, the thing that's missing here that I always get from the two of pentacles is there's usually uh, water in the background, you know, a very violent sea with a boat being tossed around. You don't get that here because that's where the need for balance comes in. Three of pentacles, enterprise, success, talent, and teaching. And look at the little mushrooms. The four of pentacles. Security, stability, saving, foundation, money. We had a lot to go with that one. The five, struggle, hardship, loss. The six, and hunt for the keywords, give, receive, family. I like that it's to give, give and receive. Seven, goals, potential, success. The eight is education, achievement, hard work, results. The nine is comfort, accomplishment, prosperity, and stability. And the ten, inheritance, family, prosperity. The page is talent, skill, money. The knight Prosperity, benefits, investment. The queen, loyal, charming, wise, loving. And the king, reliable, visionary, generous. Okay, I want to see something here. Um, the first knight um, of wands is a woman. The knight of cups is a woman. And then the last two, the swords and the pentacles have um, animal knights. Okay. okay. So let's do a blessing of this deck that wants me to remember that I am in this world, but not of it. <laughs> it's just, I, it's a gentle, along um, the lines of all the Hay House Tarot decks that I have experience with, they are gentler, um, like the Light Seers, like the um, Unfolding Path, like the, what else is there? Um, uh, there's a bunch others, but yes, Hay House decks have that, that gentle, nurturing vibe to them. So, by air and fire, may you be purified and charged and inspired and 
in, uh, active vision and all that. <laughs> it's so much fun shooting videos when Mercury is in its shenanigans stage. And by water and earth, may you be blessed and made whole. By the sound of the bell. Invite spirit in. And guides and guardians, allies and ancestors, <gasps> thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being so present in this world. Um, we're, we're going through a wonderful evolution right now. Think about how very prevalent this discipline is. Um, readers and healers and astrologers and all these kind of things. You know, when I grew up, it was all so fringe. And now it is borderline mainstream. I mean, it's mainstream for me because it's my context anyway. But I think anybody looking from the outside has to be aware as well. So I'm very grateful for that. And I offer you fresh water and I offer you the fire of Azrael, that the spirit of divination can awaken in this deck. Is it my charcoal actually burning? I think it is. Ah, truth time. I am not looking forward to shuffling this. Hay House decks have heavy card stock, and they are not easy on my hands. So I'm going to do one with the whole deck, which, yes, works exactly the way I thought it would. I'm not even going to try to bridge. And then I'm going to split the deck. Um, we have a little bit of bowing, but I'm going to split it to get that good riffle randomization but then i will be splitting the deck and picking cards because you can't get a good shuffle when you can't get a good shuffle thank you captain obvious oh see i can't even do that all right let's just cut shuffle and then you will split and pick i will take time and look at they're staying bowed see this is why i don't like this cardstock because it's not really cardstock it's cardboard so you know, how much of a bummer is it to have gone through this absolutely incredible deck and get to a place where it's like, Ugh, and now I'm crashing and disappointed. <laughs> it's reminding me of the, um, the Star Tarot, which is also the same way. Fabulous deck, but I just don't reach for it because of the card stuff. <laughs> All right, now let me get over my grumpies and focus in. And I had to take a moment there to get my shoulder back in joint. I have hypermobility if you're new here. All right, now focus in. Welcome, welcome to the collection. Let's ask for a reading, a six card reading. Do you see what's happening here? I'm holding the deck like this and it's splitting because those cards bent and stayed bent. How fucking disappointing is that? I mean, I guess I can pull them back together, but <laughs> I'm going to call Hay House on that. Um, I I called them, I'm trying to think why I called them, but I did end up calling Hay House like in the last month to tell, and uh, you know, while I had them on the phone, it's like, I'm going to give you a little bit of feedback. And the woman was lovely. And she's like, oh, we love to hear it. Please, please, please. And I told her about the cardstock. And she's like, I'm, I'm typing this in right now. I will pass this along. So, you know, I might send them this video and go, look what happened to this deck when I shuffled it the way I shuffle decks. Bitching over. Now, please, may we have a message for the collective. Whatever we need to hear, whatever we need to hear today, I'm going to split and pull six cards. All right, number one is the Mother Star. Whoa. Okay, so the number one card we get is yes. That's a reading all by itself. So where are we starting from? We're starting from yes. 
We are starting from the realm of possibility. And the create. Is it just splitting where the cards are bent? I'm going to hold it tight together and then death. Holy shit, man. Okay. Okay, that one wants to come too. That one. And that one. And see, we have the fool and the magician together. So you can't get that good randomization. You may end up taking a hit on one of those and the four of wands. So look at this. We've got... All majors, except for the Four of Wands. And then we've got this Mother Star and the Creator. So, the Mother Star, the Yes card. I read that. I'm going to go back to it. Um, the path that has led you to where you are today has been full of twists and turns. There have been times, blah, blah, blah. It means you're coming to a place now where you can look back and see that every setback served a purpose. So the yes is the, the lack of denial of things, the acceptance, the looking at the whole story and saying, yes, every single part of this is a vital part of this story. So nothing is a waste. Nothing is a mistake as long as you learn from it. And just bringing in the energy of yes. Then when we go down to the four of wands here, what do we have? Cooperation, creativity, union, freedom. So this, as I work with this six cards thing that I started laying out, it's starting to kind of sort itself into patterns. And putting the card, the first card in the middle, I like because it gives us this axis of beginning and end and then we fill in the sides so the mother star is that looking back on everything with yes in your mind so it's also an invitation to redeem some things that you've been looking at as a no and say what can i glean from this what can i redeem from this situation that will turn it into a positive for me and what that takes is creativity but look at this union and freedom. Where are we headed? Into a place where we cooperate with each other, where we join together in a creative fashion to um, manifest freedom for everyone. That's what the union is about. Freedom and union. Everyone deserves it. Okay, now on this side, I hear cats going out because now the door is open. All right. So the creator. Okay. There's a powerful energy brewing in the atmosphere. It may feel over overwhelming or tinged with darkness. The urge to run and find shelter. All right. It's also here to remind you of the power of the word no. So we look at what's brewing around us. I mean, holy shit, you guys. Everything from political upheaval and just war crimes and atrocities going on to natural upheaval and disasters and earthquakes and volcanoes, you know? So yes, there's a lot of upheaval going on. Look at the lightning bolts here. And I have to say, you know, the, the figure on this card is a little bit at odds with the idea of that no. Sitting here, they, you know, both are women, each have a cat. Um, it doesn't mention the cat on this one, although it mentions the tiger on this one. But saying no, and I'm looking at her holding this cat in front of her as being something closed off. You know, we're self-contained. We're not letting you in. Um, but yeah, talking about things rocking and rolling around, the cloudy skies, the lightning. And then we have the yes, and then we have death. So there's no, and there's death. There's rocky situations going on that are tinged with darkness, and there's death. So this can acknowledge that there is a lot of actual death going on in the world around us, always. It's part of life. 
but it really brings into focus the you know what the result of some of these situations are and then the positive side of that is where what needs to die what is there that's happening that actually needs to die and go away transformation new beginnings endings change so if we take our creativity and bring about new beginnings and change, but we have to say no to some things. We've got to bring about the endings first. Then we have the magician and the fool, power, action, skill. All right, let's read the death card first. Death is the great mystery, the crossing over into the unknown. Ruled by powerful Scorpio, this card holds much weight within the human psyche. Most fear its appearance. Okay, most fear its appearance, but it is actually not a sign of a physical death. It is rather an indicator of necessary change. And to me, the death card has always been final change. Um, is there something or someone in your life you cling to simply because it, it or they feel familiar and safe? Do you know deep in your heart that it is time to lay the matter to rest? Do not put off this inevitable outcome. Instead, have faith that when you loosen your grip on what is passing away, it makes space for new life. When you loosen your grip on what is passing away. I love her writing. One chapter ends and another begins. Prepare for rebirth. And the quotation, life and death are one thread. The same line viewed from different sides. And that's Lao Tzu. So um, back to the necessary change thing. Um, in the major arcana, there are many. There are groups of cards of change. Um, Wheel of Fortune is natural, cyclic, karmic change. The Death card is final change. Um, the Judgment card is inevitable, transformative change. The Tower card is sudden, disruptive change. So many cards of change, and let's face it, that, you know, the Major Arcana talking about the human condition and our journey here, so much of the human condition is how we screw ourselves by the way we deal with change or don't, you know, or don't deal with change. So it's not as, you know, it makes sense that there are so many cards representing different kinds of change. So there's the death card, necessary change. Then we have the magician. So interesting that all these majors came up. <clears throat> Power, action, skill. Did you know that when you sweep away the clouds of doubt and fear and sink deeply into yourself, you are magic? Yes, I do know that. The magician represents Mercury, a planet of mighty movement and action. Take advantage of the alchemical energy this card provides. It will help you transmute your shadows into the resourceful aspects of your being that they're meant to be. This powerful shift will clear space for swift and effortless manifestation. Please don't waste a precious moment of this magic-rich time by questioning your worth. You are here for a divine purpose, and right now you are tapped into mighty forces that can bring you great things. And the quote is, those who don't believe in magic will never find it. That's Roald Dahl, and it is just the plain-ass truth. Okay, so now, you know, this power of yes and no, here's what needs to stay, here's what needs to go, and, and here's... You know, how we move through that change of ending things and look at them as new beginnings and transformation. We require power and skill and action to bring about this manifestation. Then we have the fool, purity, potential, risk, innocence, and desire. You are pure potential. The fool asks you to draw upon the spirit of youth, innocence, and wonder. This card is about starting anew and once again marching to the gentle beat of your heart's desire no matter where you are in your life journey. The Fool card is energetically connected to the planet Uranus, representing change and new beginnings. So throw caution to the wind, take a bold leap, and have faith that you will be caught by the loving hands of the universe. The world may call you foolish, but it takes courage to commit to the path of full soul embodiment. The world may call you foolish, and I like the way there's a call to the world card at the end of the majors, which, you know, is the bridge to the fool. But it takes courage to commit to the path of full soul embodiment, allowing the fullness of your infinite soul, your pure, holy soul, 
that has never can never be separated from all of creation because they're all one and the same and allowing that soul to live while you are still in this body. Wow. Wisdom begins in wonder is a quote from Socrates. All right. So there's risk. We've got to bring our power and our skill and we've got to get active and there's risk involved and we have to do it with an eye to the great potential that's, you know, relating to the yes card here, the great potential, the fool is all potential, it's the zero card, big circle, nothing manifest yet, which means it's all potential. So we take this, yes, we've come into this realm of all potential, but we are using our skills connected to the no card here to decide where we want to apply our skill, where what we want to put our action and power into. And the fool also dealing with this full all potential has death in mind that we want to create something new. We don't just want to create the same things that we've had before. And then we funnel down into creativity, union, and freedom. We must do this together. Men, women, and everyone, on you know, wherever you land on that spectrum, we must do it together. The male energy, the female energy, the force, the form. And we must do it in a creative way. We are creating the new. And it must be with the idea towards freedom. Freedom to live. Freedom to food and water. Freedom to have access to these things. Education. Freedom to love who you love. Freedom to be safe. That's what matters. And the mother star in the middle is saying, yes, it's possible. Yes, we can. We're dealing with the big no and, and the death, you know, the death cult on this planet of Abrahamic religions. <sighs> but we can. With our skill, with our power, taking risks, um, we can do this. Wow. Amazing deck. I am going to call Hay House and bitch about the cardstock. I really am because they deserve to hear it. And I'm going to send them, maybe I'll email them this time and send them a picture of what happened to the deck after I shuffled it one time. I'm not going to give it up. You know, I don't want to send it back to them because it's a fabulous deck. I'm glad I didn't have an occasion to break down crying, <laughs> except in the beginning, in the introduction. But let me know what you think. Have you... Uh, purchase this deck. Are you using it? What do you think? I love it, love it, love it, love it. I think uh, this week's live is going to have all kinds of new decks in it. <laughs> anyway, it's so good to hang out with you. Please hit that like button on your way out if you would and subscribe if you haven't already. I don't make money off of these videos. I haven't monetized anything, but um, the like and subscribe will help more people see it. And I'm closing in on 3000 subscribers. When I get to that point, even more people can see it. So hang out and uh, like and subscribe and all that kind of crap. And now I'm talking too much. I will see you next time um, on a video. <laughs> Until then. <laughs> Until then. Oh, here comes a hawk in the woods. Hello. This is Luna. Blessed be. Mm -hmm.